Yeah. You know, I think my mom was the most influential person in my life. I saw my mom struggling. I saw my mom struggling with my three sisters. We are living in an uncompleted house. No electricity, nothing. And the, the, the uncompleted house was up to five-story building. Anybody can bunch in. We alone living in there. Anybody can bunch in and kill you guys for rituals. And we were living in Nzongo. I see. Yeah. So it was with your mom. What about your, your dad? You never, I never no. heard anything about him. <laughs> my dad. For me, I never say anything bad about my dad. You know, me and my dad, we were cool. And we spoke. Is he alive? No, my, my dad t died 13 years ago. OK. So we spoke about something very important. Me and my mom and my dad, three of us. My dad was, my mom was very angry about my mom, my, 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 da my dad. Why you left us here and then I said, I told my mom, you know what, just leave this man alone. If he went there and then things were good, he will never just uh, leave us alone like that. Unfortunately for my dad, when he got to Canada, they were the pioneers that got there. He was doing really well and he got stroke. So he couldn't work anymore. So I just told my mom that my mom was just having a patient that everything would be okay. But for me, the one who inspired me most in my life was my mother because I saw her struggling, falling and getting up, raising three kids, being in an uncompleted house. We ate a one more almost close to one year every day. So when the success come, I cannot just bear that success alone. I need to share with people, especially my grandmother. Great stuff. What I think is, uh, you know, my children are everything to me because um, they didn't ask me to bring them into this world. I brought them. So I need to just provide for them. I need to just be there for them. But then, um, and it's about challenging. I told them, if you do well in school, I'll put your name there. So it's about a competition for them. So I, I put, yeah, my son, uh, Junior, I put him his name there, but he, he wasn't, he didn't do something well in the game. So I have to change it. And he's now playing in, in, in England. So I change it and I put David because David is also the same position. My son Floyd is the one that I, you know, he make me laugh all the time. Mm. I asked him what he want to do. He said, I want to be a boxer. So I said, hey, you're not going to be a boxer. I don't want to sit on the ringside. You get him beating. So he changed his mind now. But I don't want to oppose anything on my kids. Mm. I want them to be free, uh, free, comfortable, to tell me exactly what they want to do. But in uh, name the, the cast after my children, I think it's a, it's, a, it's a privilege for me. Well, I mean, it depends on him, but I, my influence will play a major role. Because and what, what would be your influence? Well, uh, he loved, because yesterday we were just texting, and he told me that he would love. I posted my picture, I think 20 years ago, yeah. uh, on, the, on the status, and he called me, said, Daddy, I've seen this picture. It was a Ghana against Cameroon Camp 2000. Mm. And I, was, I, I think I was tackling Samoleto or whoever, or in Boma. Yeah. And he told me, oh, I would love to be in this Jay-Z one day. Wow. And I told him. If God willing, you'll be there. But it's not only God willing, you will need to put an effort. Mm. You need to work hard for it. I worked hard for it before I got there. You cannot get on a silver platter because your daddy is a Miko for It's not going to work like that. You need to work hard to get where you are. And he said, yes, I understand. But now, for me, he can play in the midfield. He can play in the central back. So I watched him playing, and I was really impressed. By my left-footed, David is a, is a magician. And I, 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 I would love to see them one day. Don't you think Abedi Pele is happy? Mm. He's happy watching his children playing for Ghana. Mm. Why not me? So one day, if it comes like that, I'll be more than glad. Well, for me, Captain, for me, it's nothing to me. Uh, it's just a band. Somebody can be on the foot of play. I remember when I was playing with the likes of Abedi Pele, Tony Abua, Frank Kamankwa, and all those players. Because I speak a lot in the foot of play from behind to organize the team. I bet you will always say, everybody should listen to Sami because I see things from behind and I can organize my team very well. So it wasn't anything like you being a junior player or whatever it is. How many times did I captain for Ghana? But I don't want to be just, you know, it's like a captain here and there, problems. No, I don't want it. Like I said, 2002, it happened when they wanted to get rid of CK. I just told them, you know, have you spoke to CK? It could be possible that I play Blaster before CK. Because I played Blaster 92. I don't know, maybe CK 92, the same 92. But for me, it's just a band. Steven was a captain. 
But when we qualified for the World Cup 2006, he never did anything behind me. He I always see. come to me and just, you know, when we have a, maybe a conversation with the people, all the players, they will leave it to me because they know that I know. So I just have a conversation with the people who bring their ideas. He showed you respect. Me. No, I mean, why not? Because I was there before he came, but I never even think about being a captain. Honestly, okay. I never. Because for me, it's, it's just a band. You show your leadership in the field of play. Let me give you a scenario here. 2014 World Cup. Messi was a captain for Argentina, but you could see the inspiration. And the, 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 the thing that Mascherano was doing in the field of play, Messi wasn't doing that. It doesn't necessarily mean that Mascherano is not a leader. He is a leader in the field of play. Steven was a leader. I love the way he conducted himself in terms of leadership. But so far as he gave me a respect, coming to me all the time in my room, Charlie, Tuga, what are you going to do? What are you going to say? What are you? No, he, all of them they know. And I never fight for myself. I do for the players. Because without the players, I cannot win. I cannot win alone. So we all come in as a team mm. and make a decision for ourselves. You know, people get it twisted. Mm. You know, all those rumors was going on was lying. It's okay. not about the Jay-Z. Okay. They, they know it. The big men, they know it. And I'm so glad that Ben Kofi apologized to the me. The late Ben Kofi. God bless his soul. Yeah, well. he apologized to me before he passed on. Wow. And he said it in front of a lot of people. And then I was so glad. When my daughter died, he came to my house and just get me one-on-one -on -one in his arms and spoke into my ears and say something very important. He said, you know what? You are a strong person and you can do it. And I apologize once again for what happened in 2002 in Mali. It was just a simple. I recently got a, a message for somebody that Coach Malik said he was the one sacked me from the camp. It kills me, honestly. When I, hear those, yeah, yeah. when I hear those things, it kills me. Mm. You know, I respect him a lot. They were the people who paved the way for all of us to be where we are today. I mean, mm. there's some people also pay, play ahead of them before they also get there. You yeah. understand? So, but you cannot go and stand on the radio or TV station and say that you sacked me from the blast. Account. But I don't think he knows how he got to Mali. I don't think he knows. And I can just have a witness who knows exactly what happened that Coach Mali get to, to, to Mali. They didn't want to take him. They didn't. But so, all those things, when you say 18 years th uh, ago, things, I don't think it's relevant. Mm. And as an elder person, you know what you're talking about. Don't go on the radio and lie about somebody that you just said that, oh, I suck him from the camp. I suck him. No, I mean, with a due respect, it wasn't cool, honestly. But Mali, they said that I went to the nightclub. And I want everybody to know where we were at that time. <laughs> Please. It was a village. Honestly, they, they all know. And the players, they, they know. I, I think I remember Imano Sekufo made a comment. He, he, he spoke the truth to all Ghanaians. So for me, I'm not the one to come and say what happened in Mali. It's 18 years ago. It's past and gone. I don't, I don't think about it. Mm. And I, I was glad that I left. It could be somebody gets sickness. How did Makinese leave the camp? 2002. Have we ever asked that question before? Tell me about it. Why did he leave the camp? <laughs> no, he know himself. I mean, I think Nathaniel would be great than when you see Michael and ask him those questions. Why did they complain about Derek Barton cooking his room? Did we ever ask about those things? If players are comfortable, will they do that? If there's a good cook, if there's a good food, will the players do that? They will not. Intention for him to cook in his room. We should ask those questions. It's not Sami Kufo going home. You understand? Who, who organized Adidas for the team? It was me. They didn't know anything. So you, you got know, that deal for the Black Stars? No, it's then? not. It, because they didn't know. They didn't know. Because where we were, where, uh, we, were we don't have a T-shirt. Ask anybody who went to Mali. We didn't have a T-shirt. Everybody's wearing his own T-shirt. We go to dining hall with Burkina, with, uh, with uh, Morocco and South Africa. South African coming with a uniform, everybody knows this is a South Africa. But who even recognize this is Ghana? 
unless maybe they see Michael Essien, Samiko Fu, and the other players. Nobody was even thinking about the, this is Ghana team. I mean, come on, it was very bad. And they, they themselves, they know. And I'm glad that the things have been improving. At the later part of my career with the national team, I've seen a good thing. Mm. Our time in uh, South Africa 96, yeah. we had a better team okay. than where we have to qualify Ghana to the World Cup. I must say that. Yeah, okay. yeah it's, it's, it's clear. The individual, I'm talking about the individual qualities, it was unbelievable. Because I can mention about 10 solid, great players. How many young ones even think about Azik Asari? Yeah. He, for me, he was the best player that you can see that this guy, you don't know what he's doing, but you cannot pass him. He's too good. Likes of Frank Kamankwa, you know, Yawa Champo, Yawa Prego. We have all the qualities there. Abedi, Tony Abua, Ali Ibrahim was there, you know, Jimon Odia. So why couldn't we qualify for the World Cup? You know, why couldn't we win the AFCON as well? Because I think things were not right in camp. That is okay. what I must say. Things were not right. What I can say is yeah. it was like, uh, it started all from Senegal 92. Okay. I believe it was a captainship. Okay. Between Abedi Pele and, and, and Tony Abua. And then Abedi handed the captain to Tony Bafo in the final. Um, I think that was, a, that was the whole thing started. And then 94, we didn't do well in Tunisia. So 96 was a, a, just a, a thing that we can all redeem ourselves with just to win the trophy. But it uh, was, a, was a, a little bit challenge in the camp because sometimes somebody will come late into training. The whole team will stay in the bath for almost 30 minutes. And that person is upset. Doesn't want to come down until we send somebody to go upstairs. So everybody get upset. You know, so indiscipline was yeah, one of them. Well, I would just say that. Mm. But you know, 2006, qualify to the World Cup. We started 2003 with Ralph Zumdek. Yeah. And I remember Stephen came to my room. I said, Tuga, you know what? The only thing that we can leave a good name just to do well for ourselves and for our country at this period. He came with Jomensa to my room. I said, you people got out from my room. So I was just saying, move free or come, free me. Ah. So they're still coming. And I just said, you know what? Okay, let's sit and talk. So we have a conversation, just three of us. And then, you know, Michael is, he doesn't care. Michael doesn't care. He, either he come or he doesn't come. He will go to the field and play his game. So just three of us having a conversation. And then I just said, it's time for us to qualify for the World Cup. Because I think I'm getting out. So the only option that I have, just to play the World Cup and just tell myself, everything that FIFA has organized, I've been part of it. So it was in my mind. But the, the attitude of the, that boys qualify for the World Cup, for me, was amazing. Because... Ghana needed it that time, and I think it was the right time for us to qualify for the African Cup. In our first World game Cup. in Germany, you placed a bet with Francesco Totti. Or no, no, no. You no, placed no. a bet? It wasn't true. Okay. <laughs> you know, when it comes to like that, everybody will just bring his opinion. But okay. how? No, I never do that. And okay. for me... But did you have any, did you have a conversation, you know, Telling each other, hey, we're going to beat you, we're going yeah, to beat yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, that, yeah, okay. yeah. Because we were so it wasn't a bet. You no, 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 no. no. We were, it was even Daniele uh, De Rossi okay. and uh, Simeone Perotta. Oh. So just in the dressing room, they say, oh, I was glad yeah. that we were in the same group. Okay. So that day, I think we were playing Juventus in, in Turin. So I met Steven and he said, oh, tell you, we are in the same group with Italy. And I said, that's good. Because I knew it. When we have a, a clear mindset, we can win that game. But for me, I was playing the best, and then that mistakes happen. And it happened to every player. So somebody told me that, have you regretted? I said, for what reason? You don't regret that mistake that no, resulted in one of the goals? As a footballer, will you regret something? 
I cannot just you say to me. myself, I mm. cannot say to myself that I regret. Okay, how many, how many big games did I do? Or play for myself, or play for my country, or play for my, uh, uh, for my, uh, my club? Did I regret playing that big games? I will not. So I cannot just have one, one bad game, or is it, a, is it a bad game, one mistake, and I just say the whole of my career, I regret that game. No, I cannot do that. You know, but, but uh, the public reaction, I mean, yeah. I remember very well that when we even arrived, uh, you know, it was, I mean, your movement, you know. Yeah. I remember the visit to the presidency where you were yeah. decorated with grand medals. Yeah. Uh, President Kufo actually gave you a hug to, yeah. to give you some assurance and comfort you as well. There was a lot of harsh public reaction to that. Well, I mean, that's that. that how the Ghanaians going to react. Mm. You know, for me, I mean, if somebody do well for the whole of his career and just one mistake and he react that way, should I put that thing in me or should I even keep on thinking about it? No. I, have, I think I have better things to think about, not that. His passing gone is a game. Mm. As already, how many players in that World Cup make an on goal? Six. Did something happen to them? No, one of them even win the World Cup. So I think as a as a footballer, you you may find it a, a, a very difficult situation. I think Barcelona Chelsea 2012. Messi should score a penalty for Barcelona to go through. What did he do? He makes it. The Barcelona fans killed him. No. Look at the good thing that the guy has done for Barcelona. So I was just thinking that people will see me rising up from under 17, under 20 Olympic Games, come to the blaster. So it won't be a problem. But you know our people. But if you think about that, you make a lot of mistakes. So I don't want to put myself in that category. I just really want to relax go and sometimes i have a conversation with the people about that mm. yeah but i don't i don't think about it mm. well I think, I think the best player that have given me tough time i think is mark max over max over mass okay mm -hmm. yeah mark mark, mark over mass okay yeah because we have a game 2005 no 1995 1995 champions league semi-final first leg in Munich, uh, Tapatoni called me and he said, Sammy, you know what? You're going to play against Kanu. Because me and Kanu, we know each other from way back. So I was so glad that I'm going to play against my friend. Because we have been spoken on the phone for yeah. quite a days. And we are going to beat you. I'm, I'm going to kick you. I'm going to do that. You know? So it was like a, a, a big debate on the phone. And then 30 minutes... I think 30 minutes to, to make the team. He came to my room. He said, Sammy, things have changed. I said, what is wrong? Am I going to sit down? I said, no, 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 no. You're not going to sit down, but you're going to play a different position. I thought that I'm going to play in the midfield against Sedov. So I was glad as well. Because he was young, I was young. I was dynamic and he was the same. And he said, you're playing right back. I said, what? What am I going to play right back for? So Marcos Babel said that he cannot play. Why? Because they show us a tape where Obama was killing the right guy. The right back was tall. And Marco was tall. He said he couldn't play. So I have to go there and play. But first, first half, first five minutes, I got him. I was dribbling him. Then Sedov come, Ronald Debua come, Raikard come, all in the same place. And they were killing me. But the second half, I get it in my pocket. And that's the only striker that I have played against and he's giving me tough time. And the second one that I can say is uh, Titi Ori. Okay. We play in Highbury. This was 2-2. Two -two. He scored first four minutes. I wasn't the one who was close to him. It was uh, Thomas Linke. So Otmar had to give me a whistle to change and go and be with him everywhere he go. And uh, he was quiet. I tried to just do my own stuff, kick him hard. So he wasn't coming to my position again. So it was good. I but see. to play against Ronaldo, Zidane, and all those big players, give me courage to play against them because they have made their name. Like when you play against Manchester, Real Madrid, Barcelona, Rivaldo, and all those players, it was for me for the day that, you know, I was just looking forward to because it's a big stage. And if you want to make an impact in world football, these are the games that you have to play. And I was glad to play against those. 
Is that it? like I said, I, I, I love to read and I, I love to challenge myself mm. because you being a football star, one day you get to on an interview with the people whereby you don't want to embarrass yourself. And I had opportunity to be around good people. I'm talking in Germany. So I needed to enlighten myself, to educate myself. So it's not like you hiring a teacher, but you can read for yourself. You, you know exactly what is wrong and right. Yeah. So you know it. Yeah. So I was just, I bought a German book mm. and I was reading a lot from um, this guy, what's his name? Oh. Joel Austin. Okay. Yeah, Joel Austin. And I read a book that I think Art Bishop Duncan Williams wrote. The, uh, I think the Life. I forgot the title. Okay. But it was a, a book that was helping me. Yeah. So everything was in. So you read it, you go back and you read it again for you to know and understand what life is. Life is not about you speaking English alone. It's about how you also treat people outside. Yeah. So it was uh, something that I was just going on. Mm. And then through reading, I get to enlighten myself very well. And I had an opportunity to go to 2009 Confederation Cup in South Africa to be a pundit. Uh, when I got there, it was a, a little bit shaky. But okay. I saw my friends, the people that I used to play with, the people that I was looking up to them. And when I saw them, I need to put something in my mind and just say to myself, I'm a Ghanaian. I'm not doing this alone for myself. Like Ofiana told me, one day, 2001, he met me in a, in a hotel in Japan when we were playing the cup, uh, World Club cup, uh, Championship. Competition, yeah. Yeah, against Boca Juniors. He was in the same hotel with me. And he called me in the lobby. So two of us were sitting somewhere. He said, Sammy, you, you know you have a game today and I'm coming to the stadium. Okay, so you're not playing for yourself. You're playing for the continent and Ghana. Wow. Most, it's me that I'm sitting here. Wow. You know, I'm sitting in the stadium and I know you're going to do well. You know, those inspiration that people need and from such a great man to tell me that, I put it in my mind and I was thinking about somebody else. That's my mother. In Bayern Munich, uh, I remember that, that day, it was horrific because he had blacked out on the pitch and <laughs> gave him mouth-to-mouth -mouth resuscitation. He, he came back. What, what was the, what's, what's the first thing he said to you upon noticing that you practically saved his life that day? You know, it was a, was a, was a big news in, uh, in German media because normally I should put my hand like this to do this. Yeah. I didn't even think of it or think about my hand. I just go straight to his mouth and just blow the air. And then the picture showed it so clear. It was a quarterfinal game, Champions League 2001 against Manchester United in Munich. We won 2-1, we won 1-0, then won 2-1 here. So I never even thought that the people were just going to make it serious. But then the next day in the newspaper, semi go for his kissing Oliver Kahn in uh -huh. the field of playing and you know, they make fun of it. At the end of the day, we won. So he, but, but what did he say to you after, no, after noticing that? After the game, after the it game. It was a life-saving Yeah, after the, after the game, after the game, he came to me because I drove him from camp, you know, because they, they took his driving license. I see. <laughs> he was driving over speed, so they took his driving license. So my house is here, this is his house. So I always drive him to training. And then we were very cool and he said, oh, thank you. Thank you means thank you very much. Sure. So, yeah. That's what I said, you need to understand the game. It's not every good player that can understand the game. Mm. You need to have an IQ of the game, mm. just to understand. Yeah. Because it could I mean, be for that, sorry, but there's, there's quite a number of you who have an understanding of the game. There are obviously, there are those of you who are in a different class as well. Yeah. But I'm, I'm also very interested in the conversations that went on, how you were contacted and all of that. Well, no, well, I mean, uh, Max. There was a guy called Max. He called me, I don't know where he got my number. He called me and said, oh, Sammy, I want you to come to South Africa and come and work for Supersport. But on my way, on my way to office, somebody also called me from SABC. That, oh, Sammy, I want you to come and work for SABC for me. 
and that person I play against him in South Africa. I see. Yeah. And then uh, he called me. I couldn't tell Max yeah. that somebody also called me. Mm. But I weigh the offer. Yeah. I weigh the offer and I, I spoke to somebody who is really good in business. Yeah. And he told me that Super Sport and SABC. Super Sport is the whole continent. SABC is just in South Africa. Sure. So you have to choose. But the money yeah. was different. The different, because South Africa is like a, sorry, Super Sports is like a, a team. So when I look at the money, when I look at the exposure, then I say, no, let me take Super Sport. Mm. Yeah. And it's been a good story. Yeah, yeah. I mean, amazing. Mm. For me, um, you've been out of the game for almost 10 years or more than 10 years. And it, people, sometimes when I go somewhere, somebody like, oh, now he got a hair again. <laughs> you know? So without yeah. Super Sports, nobody will see that I'm shaving yeah. my hair on the live on TV. Yeah. Marcel was, uh, Marcel DJ was the one who, uh, you know, initiated the whole story and Daniela Mokachi. We got, that day we were three in the pandit and Rob Molawa. And we were having a back door yeah. behind the scene. We were having a conversation. There's somebody, uh, in the in the room said oh Ghana is gonna lose today so I was so angry I said no we cannot lose so if I lose I will do this if you if you could well lose what are you gonna do okay I'm gonna buy McDonald's okay no problem you are a worker here you're gonna buy McDonald's with all your money we do that and we were leading and I feel so confident me and myself we were jumping all over all of the sudden thing the table turns around and I'm a man of my words I have to just um, bear with it no, because I have my, I have my license. Mm. Uh, I think we, we did our license A, calf in a Pram Pram. I had mine upstairs. But it never occurred me to be a coach because um, it's not like I want the players to play this, the same I was playing. No, that would be, wouldn't be possible because that mentality as a coach, you killed yourself because these young ones will do something different that you thought that they could do something better. So, no, it doesn't occur me about being a coach. But I really want to go into the administration just to bring my knowledge in terms of football, to put things together, to make things work. Well, sometimes being in a car, going to your office, you think those people that I always have a sympathy for is the women who sometimes carry peer water, carry stuff on the roadside and sell them. I feel for them. Why? Because my mom was the same situation. And then uh, the people who beg in, they have the, the, before I used to give a lot to those people, but I realized I'm encouraging them. So the young ones who stand on the street cleaning the, the, the windscreen, I try to advise them, if you want to go to school, I don't have a problem. I will just um, finance everything for you to go to school. Recently, I clinic. I took some boys to school. They came to my house to get a, uh, they brought the papers that they have registered in the school. So I pay everything for them. I think three days ago, I was going to my office and I saw a guy coming to me. He said, oh, you know, the guy that you took them to school, some of them come back and stand here. I, wow. I went because wow. it, it hurt me so much that it's not about the money that I spend. That's not an issue, but the issue is coming back to the street. You know me, I was born in street and I've always been on street. 